Steve. Thanks. All right, well, wait. Welcome to the film business, sort of. Sorry? Sort of. Welcome to the film business. Oh, sorry. I, th yes. I thought you said, what happened to the film business? No. Oh, that's yes. a whole other thing we could talk yeah. about in phrases. The name of your group is The Spiritual Cowboys? The Spiritual Cowboys. Wonderful. Ooh. But that's not a tour jacket. It's my tour jacket. <laughs> <laughs> is this group uh, friends hanging about for one album? Uh, what, is it, what form does it take? Well, I just fancied getting together a little garage band, you know, as if I was starting afresh. And we actually rehearsed in the garage down the bottom of the road. And it is friends who I get on well with, as opposed to choosing fantastic session musicians. It's more <clears throat> people who are on the same wavelength as me. A couple of them we know. Yeah, you probably know. Martin. I've got two drummers who play on one giant kit that looks like nothing on earth. That's Martin Chambers from The Pretenders and Ula from Eurythmics. Yeah. And the rest of the characters in the band are insane people, you know, like Wild Mondo on the keyboards or Izzy May Do Right on guitar. Yeah. What do you require from these folks other than they, they must read your mind? Uh, Nothing more than just plain, wor plain worship, you know? Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, they've got a be into the things I'm into, you know, so when we're playing the songs live, the lyrics that I'm singing that they they feel a part of. Right. Let's uh, talk about the video for a second. Uh, it's directed by Joel, mm -hmm. um, who has this wonderful visual sense, which is what you've always had, along with Andy, you've mm -hmm. always had a very definite vision of what you wanted to do, mm -hmm. but you're dealing with a different uh, pot here. This is you. Mm -hmm. So you wanted to you wanted to do a, a concentrate on just uh, performance and let the rest of the movie work its way in. Yeah, I as we were establishing, you know, the spiritual cowboy's birth or whatever. I just wanted to let people see the band, the way we play live and how it looks. And because the song fitted so well with the movie, to do with the lyrics and what was happening, it was easy to put scenes from the movie in to the film. Whereas a lot of these pop songs from films. They seem to have nothing to do with each other. You know? Do you have a connection with uh, life after death? Well, have I've you been, been there? I've been through that experience, yeah, when I had um, a really big operation after a car crash. And I also was, um, I'd been heavily addicted to amphetamines, and so I was going through that at the same time, which affected the anesthesia. And uh, I had a kind of experience like that. What we learned from this movie is that, now, well, one of the possibilities, it's all supposition, but one of the possibilities that there, it's not all white light, end of the tunnel, voices, things mm -hmm. flapping in the breeze. It's uh, very personal. What was your experience? Well, as far as I can remember, um, which is hard, it's like remembering a dream or something. Yes. I just remember um, a very speeded up sort of version of bits of my childhood, you know. Very similar to what Joel shot, actually, yeah. <clears throat> Some of the bits in the film where it launches into uh, the period when they're meant to be clinically dead um, is very reminiscent of that feeling I had. It's like acid. Like acid, yeah. Only, is, is it, in both cases, it's uncontrollable, isn't it? And yeah, well, it's like taking your mind off, off the lead, you know. Like you take a dog for a while, you let it off the lead. It's whoosh, did acid ever do anything positive for you? <clears throat> That's hard to say because I can't remember what I was like before. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, taking mind expanding drugs at a certain period of time in the 60s had a kind of speeded up awareness effect. Mm -hmm. That was the idea of it. I think drugs nowadays, because it's used so much to make money for drug lords and people like that, are a different kind of drug and they're more dangerous and more addictive and it's all a different time period now. Uh, you see yourself doing more film work? Yeah, I've just actually finished uh, producing and co-writing a six-part music TV series that I'll probably be on in Canada, I don't know which station yet, but it's coming it on in English. English. Music. You know that. Yeah, it could be much Please. And, um, it's coming on in England and all over Europe What's and it called? in America. It's called Beyond the Groove. Oh, yes. You and some layabouts talking music? What, what do you do? No, nothing like that at all. It's kind of scripted and it's 
David Rappaport, who unfortunately committed suicide yeah. not long ago, he played the lead role of a businessman who had completely lost the thread of his own life and is just fanatical about making deals. And his secretary hypnotizes him with some car keys and sends him on a journey. And in this journey, which lasts the six episodes, he goes all the way from LA to New Orleans. And he ends up learning off all these people on the way. It could be Harry Dean Stanton or K.D. Lang or George Clinton. And they all sort of feed his mind with a different alternative way of things. And he ends up being um, kind of cured. Well, anybody who hangs around Harry Dean, or K.D. for that matter, mm -hmm. is going to have their lives changed one way or another. Mm -hmm. Yes. He lives in your same neighborhood, doesn't he, Harry Dean? Not far away. Right. Well, We're often, he's around my house quite often. And Katie's not, not far from me. What's your house like these days? What kind of shape is it in? Who's, who's hanging about? It's like Grand Central Station. Yes. <laughs> is there a, are the tunes being written, people recording? Yeah, I just, uh, let me see what's just happened now. I just finished uh, a song that Daryl Hall's been recording for, the Hall of Notes new album. Mm -hmm. Uh, there and I'm working with Maria McKee tomorrow and Thursday and Friday I'm doing a thing with Michael Palin, the actor for children and my wife's recording her album in the back garden and it's total chaos. <laughs> but you like that. Yeah. You set it up that way. That's my favorite thing. Uh, now this solo album comes out, it does well. Does it cause you to have to make decisions or are those decisions already made in terms of yourself and Anne? <coughs> well, if this album did really well and Annie still didn't want to, she wanted more time off, I'd just make another album because I, I've written so many songs and I'm so into it that uh, it would be really great fun to make another album and then if she wants to make a Eurythmics album after that, I'll make a Eurythmics album. Huh. She always said she wanted time off to be a better cook. Yeah, she's, she's been asking for time off for nine years. Um, do you see yourself uh, directing videos, getting in behind cameras? Well, I've done that quite a lot throughout your rhythmic career yeah. now. And, um, but you feel comfortable because it's, it's you guys, but yeah, stepping out I, of that. I directed two videos for Bob Dylan uh, a while ago, and that was fun. But I don't know, right at the moment I'm into being a rock and roll band in the true sense of the word. A working musician? Yeah, you know, a rock band, you know, a real band that's singing something and with a massive backbeat behind it. Which is what we like about you. Thanks for talking to us. Thanks a lot. All right. Right.